Oh my goodness, the Joker is returning to the big screen. Oh my god. Was he ever really gone? Not really. He was behind you. <laughs> the whole time? The whole time, yeah. Putting kick me signs on your back. There's hundreds on there. That's so the Joker or some version of the Joker. So twisted. Yeah. And look, if we're talking about Joker 2019, we cannot go past Batman 1989, which was the first, well, not the first uh, movie adaptation, was it? Because, you know, that was that the was first 19- movie adaptation of anything. Because <laughs> obviously there's a 1966 version. Uh-huh. But it seems like this was the version that made people go, oh my God, comic books can be real and cool. It certainly did for me. Like when I was a kid, I watched the 1960s Batman TV show because it was on after school. And then one day I was at the movie theater and I saw a trailer for Batman 1999 and I went, oh my God, Batman is real (laughs) he's real and he exists in the real world and he's kind of scary now yeah absolutely well there is that sense there was this kind of like this is the realest thing you'll ever see in your life but looking back Comparatively, like this and the '66 version, they're both ridiculous. They're in so camp. This this one is yeah. still so camp. Yeah, it's camp in drag. Yeah, it's camp in tough guy drag is <laughs> what this, is, is what this yeah. movie is. Also, before we get into this, if people could leave a like on this video, that would be super helpful. Mm. And you know what else would be helpful? What's that? If this movie didn't say just at the start that it's based on the characters by Bob Kane. And Bob Kane alone. Oh, that's right. It did too, yeah. That was only something that was recently fixed. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Batman famously created by Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Mostly Bill Finger. Mostly Bill Finger, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was a domino mask and a red and costume a red suit. and bat wings. Like some big, like some big stiff bat wings. <laughs> what do you think of the look of Gotham in this film? I like it. Me too. Again, it's, it's anachronistic. And I think Tim Burton has gone with, let's make the city, and this is probably a cliche, but make the city a character of its own. And, kind yeah. of, and I think that ver- this version sort of gothic steampunk weirdness universe has sort of carried on through a lot of different versions the animated, like the animated version, series obviously, certainly yeah. the Arkham games yes. have a great sense of just like this city is weird and monstrous yeah. and why does it still exist but then if you go Batman v Superman it just looks like any other city really for sure absolutely yeah, it doesn't yeah. really have that kind of personality it's like and it's across you, from Metropolis and then when you go to Justice League it's just a, a series of green blocks that they've <laughs> drawn a city on top of I want to say Tim Burton's had some hits and some misses and I love this as a kid every frame still holds up for me (laughs) I still love it the Prince soundtrack I'm not super fond of me neither yeah I I feel like that is the uh, the one thing that kind of dates it maybe yeah maybe dates it or kind of like breaks it out of this timelessness well the theme song's incredible oh yeah for sure Danny Elfman's score, which of course was popularised by its inclusion in 2017's Justice League. That's right. And when they put it in that and they went, what version of Batman is this? It doesn't matter. But of course that went on to be the theme song for Batman the Animated Series. That's right. But it's still incredible. I want to talk about the casting of Batman. Okay. So the studio apparently wanted... It's Michael Keaton. Case closed. <laughs> Very well done. Who did they want? They want? I've got a number of names here. They okay. wanted Mel Gibson, but he was doing Lethal Weapon 2. I think for the time he would have been a really good choice. He would have been a really good choice, but I think that would have marred this movie for me forever. Yeah. Like I, modern modern day me, I'd be like, oh, why did I like that as a kid? <laughs> the mullet wouldn't have fit in the cowl. They would have trimmed it back or tied it in a little ponytail. <laughs> he would have batgirled it. He would have just had <laughs> yeah, it hanging out the back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ray Liotta was offered the role okay. as well as Dent and Joker, but he did Goodfellas, which I think is an excellent choice. Good call, yep. Yeah. Uh, Pierce Brosnan turned it down, which I don't mind oh, either. I've yeah. heard rumours that he might be Alfred in a new... Oh, in really? A new, in a new Batman movie. I don't movie, mind that, so, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Spielberg apparently wanted to do it at one point. Spielberg's Batman, I love it! <laughs> what do you think about him doing it with Harrison Ford? Uh, sure, he would be a good Bruce Wayne, yeah. I think. Uh, other names that were thrown up. It was pretty much every big name actor oh, yeah. at the time. Mm. Uh, Tom Hanks, John Travolta, Mickey Rourke. Bruce Willis, Kevin Costner, Kevin Spacey, Nick Cage, Tom Cruise, Arnold, and Emilio Estevez. Uh, Adam West was also apparently annoyed that he wasn't asked at the time to reprise the role. He was 61 at the time. But Tim Burton has stated in an interview since that he initially wanted Adam West and Julie Newmar, who of course play Catwoman, one of the Catwomen Mm -hmm. uh in that series, and Batman, to play Thomas and Martha Wayne in a flashback. Oh, I see. But apparently that's not something that he ever went to Adam West with. Oh, he just thought of it one day. He thought of it one day, yeah. Anyways, they obviously went with Michael Keaton at the end. He was sort of a comedic actor at the time. He was was Mr. Mom. Yeah, people most knew him from... Mr. Mom, he'd done some more serious roles, which kind of helped him kind of turn things around in the eyes of the studio. But the Twitter of the time was, of course, sending letters. 
And yeah. this famous story being that 50,000 protest letters were sent to Warner Brothers regarding, we don't want this guy as our Batman. Yeah. Which is like a paltry amount compared to like... The oh, <laughs> these days, Batman. absolutely. But, but I mean, at the time, that's yeah. insane. I mean, to send a letter. If so, if 50,000 letters got sent these days, I'd be like, people really mean this. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, isn't that interesting as well? Because these days, people are like, oh my God, they should get Keaton back as old Batman. Apparently, though, the Wall Street Journal even had an article. Well, we've got it here. You can look at it right, right now where they were like, this is probably not a good idea and people hate this. But Warner Brothers were just like, this is great publicity. That wasn't really a thing that they would weigh in on. <laughs> That's true, yeah. So it was kind of a, a big deal at the time. And I also, mean, maybe Frizzy Hairstyles Weekly would, <laughs> maybe, uh, yeah. would weigh in. They'd certainly be qualified. Definitely. In the original script, though, and I could see why people might be upset because Bruce Wayne is described as a man with muscles on top of muscles and scarred from nightly combat. Yeah. But you don't get any of that sense. He's just like a small He's just a small man in a man. turtleneck, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I think the trailer definitely turned people around, which by the way is not a good trailer oh, it's if you bad. watch it no, now. It's bad, I remember. But the imagery is still really compelling and just the stills of him in the all black bat suit. Oh my yeah. god, that's such a good It's again, you know, we've got fake muscles on it, but that's such a good design. Yeah. And again, like uh, I don't love it. All right. Uh, the cows, it looks like he, it's made out of mashed potato or something. Okay, no, that's true, yeah. It, I think it's really good in Batman Returns. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't uh -huh. love it as much. But look, as and, I think, and I think when some changes are made for an adaptation to a movie and they work, then they get slowly put back into the comic book version. Yes. And I think that's what happened with Batman is his costume started getting darker. I love the golden uh, utility belt. Yep, I like which that. Which has like a, it's only in it for, a, for like one scene, but they built like a winch into it, like a mechanical winch. Oh, right, I didn't so know So like all these bat equipment's on his back. Yeah. And then it sort of rotates around to the front. They made this incredibly complicated mechanism. So that you like you never see. That you never really see. Yeah, but right. Like when he need you know, he needs his grappling hook and it would just kind of spin around his waist and appear on his front, kind of thing. And look, to be fair, most of his gadgets are just grappling hooks. He's got the device that hits people in the nuts <laughs> sure. if they're jumping towards uh -huh. him. And he's got the grappling hook that splits Goes out in different ways, directions. Yeah. But it's mostly grappling hooks. Well, isn't that's, it? I isn't mean, it? he uses a smoke Okay, but here's point. the thing. You're right, but also this is pie nearing use of the Batman grappling hook because this movie invented Batman using yeah, a grappling really? hook because he before that he had, he, like the, he had the batarang yeah. he had the batarang on a rope and this is the first one somebody like the gas may, I mean maybe it wasn't Burton but clearly somebody in the production team was like his arms would get real tired yeah. he's not reaching a rooftop with that the funny thing is about this though they wanted to do a lot of sponsorship on Batman himself they wanted him to be seen clearly wearing Nikes those oh, right. boots are modified Nike shoes. You can see yes, that. Yes, they are. That's uh, true, yeah. But yeah, they cut Tim Burton was like, no, this is a true movie. The, 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 this is the realest thing I've ever made in my life and um, we're not going to do any of that sponsorship. Of course, this kind of idea to kind of make everything a toy and sponsor everything and with Batman with a yeah. credit card it was one of the contributing factors to eventually kill this particular Oh, absolutely, iteration. yeah. I mean, yeah. This, I mean, Batman Returns especially, like... It was, a, it was a super dark, you know, adventure into the heart of a man's soul or whatever. But at the same time, they did have Happy Meal toys at McDonald's. What's interesting about this version of Batman is it's not really his movie. We'll get to the Joker, obviously. Sure, uh-huh. But Keaton, you can't really go past how well he plays this. I mean, people remember the Let's Get yeah, Nuts yeah. scene. This lights up! Now you want to get nuts? Come on! Let's get nuts. Sure it's do. absolutely insane. It doesn't make yeah. any sense in the context of the scene. He's just lining himself up to be shot, it would seem. He really is, yeah. He's standing at like a distance apart where yeah. he couldn't even get near the Joker That's if he true. wanted what to. Can he do? Yeah. I was going to ask you about this because you know something about the deleted scene for well, this, Well, right? in the original script, which back in the day they would like make novelizations of these kind of movies and they would always, always use the original script because there wasn't enough yes. time to, to use the final shooting script. There's like a motorcycle chase after this. Does he put on a balaclava? I think and he does, yeah. Yeah. Runs off down the street. yeah, but it's yeah. not in this. Yeah. So I, th I mean, absolutely, people remember the uh, I'm Batman. Well, apparently that, that was changed because in the script it was I am the knight. Oh. And Keaton was like, why don't I just say I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Oh. <laughs> there was some back and forth and some different ways of saying yeah. it. I'm Batman? I, I am. You're Batman. <laughs> no, Michael. You've gone too far. <laughs> but he does have those over-the-top moments in it. But there's moments where like he's trying to tell Vicky Vale that he is Batman and mm -hmm. he's kind of stumbling over his words and he's trying to... He's, he's a good actor. He's yeah, good in this. He really is. And I wish even in the follow-up film that they had have given him more to do and less like well this is really a villain focused kind of freak yeah. show circus act he's not very good at being batman though and i'm going to tell you why why is that for one those first muggers which he takes down yeah he doesn't collect the money or the credit cards that they <laughs> took but he just leaves he just jumps off the roof yeah like they have their fisty cuffs and he's like tell everybody that i'm batman yeah yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll see you later. <laughs> but he's also bad at his identity. Like when he brings Vicky Vale back to his house, he's hanging upside down. That's such a weird Tim Burton thing to be like. Isn't it well, he's Batman, so he obviously he'd sleep upside down. He's like all a the bat. characteristics of a bat. He's still a man. He's still a man with blood rushing to his head. And then she comes down to the kitchen in the morning. He's just got a bowl of fruit. And he's just like. <laughs> <laughs> but even things like he'll just walk into gunfire. Yes. Like there's true. a moment where the Joker's on the steps and he's just kind of walks out and he, the bullet goes through his sleeve. Yeah, right. He gets shot as Batman quite a lot. And even though he's like bulletproof, he Ish. seems to be yeah. like, I'll just kind of stand in the way of this and I'll yeah. it'll probably be okay. I think he needs to do more Batman-y things than, than walk. He does a lot of walking yeah. around. And it's I think a lot of that is the suit. Yeah. You do see him fight a little bit, but it's close clunky for the most part. You know what I do like about this? Yes. For one, the many cameras that he has behind that mirror. But two, <laughs> the Batmobile design. Even though you need a grappling hook to take a corner, yes. it's incredibly impractical. It's a hundred feet long. Oh my if God. it's a day. Yeah. But what a great looking Batmobile. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I, I don't know if it's been superseded design wise. Well, the Tumblr's more of a, it's a, a combat Exactly. It's like I a, like the Tumbler a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a the Tumbler's like an armadillo on wheels. Yeah. It's not a bat vehicle. And everything else has been kind of <laughs> And the bat yeah. plane from The Dark Knight Rises is basically just like a like a Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just a flying just block, a series really. Of boxes. <laughs> yeah, like that design is it combines some of the weird ones from the thirties, like the comic book versions, and yeah. the one from the sixties with the jet engine in the back. Yes. Yeah. And it's also got that we had stop motion armor system I around it, it, which is good. Yeah. And it's good for machine gunning factories and blowing people up. You know it is. Yeah. That's You'll stand in front of it and say stop into a piece yeah. of 1989 equipment. Oh like God. that's going to work every time. <laughs> like that's not just going to plow through. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. You know what's even better than that, I would say? What's that? The Batwing yeah. is fucking rad. Yes. And I don't like to use the word rad, Mason, because it makes mm. me sound like an old dad. <laughs> but I think in this instance, it is absolutely 100% accurate. Look, even though it's got this incredible targeting system that doesn't actually work. Oh my, he, can't, he can't hit the broad side <laughs> of a barn. He's got so many guns on that thing. <laughs> I mean, he hits a bunch of people because he's a murderer. Yeah. I've got my kill count video, yeah. which people can check out. But it just gets shot with one bullet. Maybe it's a very long I bullet. I think it's a very long. It's 100 <laughs> feet long. Why have they ever done another design for the bat plane? Completely agree. It's perfect. It, and 100%. And even, like, it's so good that even the scene when it flies up onto the moon and it makes the bat symbol, which I think in any other situation would be like, that's a little bit on the nose. I'm it's like, the best that's... thing that's ever happened. It's exactly. It's rad. It's all right? so rad. <laughs> that, of course, brings us to... The Joker, Jack <laughs> Nicholson. The, yeah. So there's a moment at the start when he's just Jack Napier. There's a lot of controversy around that because he'd never really been named before. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it doesn't really matter because some versions he is, some versions he isn't. Like since then, that's kind of been the yeah, idea. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. But there's a moment where he hands a corrupt cop money in a sandwich, like two bits of dry right. bread, just in the middle of the night. Yes. Like that's going to be something that if somebody saw it, they'd be like, oh, it's just a gangster meeting a cop in the it, middle of this dark him alley. a sandwich. <laughs> At 3 a.m. in the morning. That's right. I mean, it looks like he's handing him a bribe, but it does have bread around it, so I guess it's just a lettuce sandwich on on rye. The surgeon did such a bad job on the Joker. I mean, he turned him into the Joker, in fairness. That face is like... You couldn't you couldn't have done better than that. I know you're a back alley surgeon, but mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> like, come on. <laughs> I like the touch. The nerves in his face have been severed and he yeah. can't not smile even yes. if he wants to. So it's not even the thing that he's pinned his face back permanently. It's just I don't know. I, it's, I don't I don't know either. A, yeah, uh-huh. He's just got sores and levers and whatever he's working <laughs> with. I don't really, uh-huh. I don't even think that guy was a surgeon. I, I think, think he was a dog murderer. I think the fact that he's made him anything resembling a face at all is actually a miracle. That's probably so. true, actually, yeah. Mm. For some of this movie, he's got the skin-coloured makeup That's over, so the, good, over yeah. the white Joker makeup. Uh-huh. The way that they had to do the scene where he'd, like, wipe it off and you've yeah. got the Joker makeup underneath, it was so elaborate and it's layers of, like, different materials, so one will wipe off and the one, other one will stay yeah. and you'll uh-huh. use a special rubbing alcohol to get one off and not the other. When really you could have just put white paint on the handkerchief and just kind of <laughs> <It's true. laughs> it swiped on. it over. Because yeah. he doesn't take the whole thing off. No, he does just does it? a little bit and then you cut. <laughs> yeah, exactly, another scene. But yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, there was some controversy, of course, around the casting of this because they always wanted Jack Nicholson. They took an image from The Shining, coloured it like the Joker and went, this is the guy, but how are we going to get someone like Jack Nicholson for this? And then they were like, okay, but if we don't get him, how about we just take that image from The Joker and we just move <laughs> it up and down on the screen? We don't have to pay him anything. In front of the lens. It won't be as rad, but... No. 
true. But people will buy it. So they actually used Robin Williams' bait, and he was famously very angry oh, about right, this. that's right, yeah. Because he wanted the role of the Joker. The writer of this, Sam Hamm, he thought, Willem Dafoe's the, the way to go. And the quote here is... Is that what he said? Willem Dafoe's the way to go. Well, the actual quote is, <laughs> we thought, Willem Dafoe just looks like the Joker. <laughs> which They're is not, not incorrect. Uh, the other thing, of course, is Harvey Dent in this movie. Yeah, Billy Dee Williams in this movie. He was supposed to reprise the role. I've got a video on it on Tim Burton's version of Batman 3, uh-huh. which became Batman Forever. He was going to come back. They were going to do a different version of Robin. There was actually going to be Robin in this. I'll get to that in a bit. Mm-hmm. But he, he was famously screwed out of the role to get a name like Tommy Lee Jones. I think he would have been a great Two-Face. Me and too. to be fair, he has actually played Two-Face since. Oh, animated? Lego, Lego Batman movie. Oh, I see. Yeah, cool. I believe so. So... Vicky Vale. Oh, yeah, Kim Basinger. Which was a character... But we called Kim Bassinger back in the day, but then uh, she got a little pronunciation tweak. And that's fine. You can yeah. call yourself whatever you want. Rafe Fines. Demi Moore. <laughs> <laughs> so Sean Young was famously cast in this role. Oh, before from Kim Blade Runner. Basinger. Yeah, but uh-huh. she broke her collarbone in a practice riding scene. She fell off a horse. Oh, in Batman. No, before. this is before. This is before oh, okay, I started right. filming. So they recast it. She turned up to Tim Burton's office when he was casting for Batman Returns for Catwoman in a full cat suit. And he was like, do not let her in. Oh, no. Like, this isn't the direction I'm going to go. Oh, and no. yeah, so. There's never, I've never heard a actor shows up at a production <laughs> office unannounced story that's ended well. Yeah, absolutely. I've yeah. never heard one. It's yeah, always it's like, like, you're too keen and we don't like and it. And we'll, they were never seen again. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So the clock tower sequence. Yes. That was a sequence which they had changed close to the production of this because they weren't really sure what way it was going to end. So they end up with this pretty good clock tower sequence which has Batman trudging his... 140 pound muscle. Oh, I've so <laughs> many flights of stairs. <laughs> flights of stairs, yeah. I'm surprised he got there in time. Though apparently it's real time from the chop is going to be 10 minutes and it's about 10 minutes for when oh, it actually see, gets right. there. Uh-huh, so they sure. actually planned it out pretty well. Or was it just, just a coincidence? But what I also love about that is you obviously get the, uh, you know, he fights the henchman up there and one yeah. of them is the guy who played the Predator who he famously oh, throws right. down the, the centre of the bell tower. But I love a good clown trouncing. <laughs> like you get, we get one in it, obviously. <laughs> it's true, just yeah. like... A man who's severely outmatched because he's 65 years old. He yeah, was a bit younger right. than that at the time. Uh-huh. But just getting absolutely pummeled. That's true. What do you think about the element that they changed it so Jack Napier killed Bruce Wayne's parents? Do you think it adds something? Like I'm there's okay. a personal stakes to it, I I'm guess? okay with it in this version, and maybe it's just because that's how I saw it as a kid, but I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. I guess that maybe Burton want, wanted this to be like one self-contained thing, and he was like, well, wouldn't it be some sort of poetic justice if this was the man who created him and then yes, he created sure. the, the other one? And But uh, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah, but I also think that the guy that they got to play young, Jack Napier I'm like holy shit that guy just get that guy <laughs> yeah, to be the Joker right. uh-huh. <laughs> I've never seen him in anything else yep but he just looks like an Alex Ross painting of the Joker. He absolutely does, yeah. yeah. So how do you feel about murdering Batman in general and the way that he murders the Joker intentionally? I mean, what way was that going to go? Unless he let go of the helicopter and he just kind of swung over it and the smacked side it aside of a building. building. Yep. Yeah. I never realised this at the time, but the Joker, you know, he falls to his death. Instead of him being just a bag of blood that's exploded at the bottom, he's really indented. He's completely he really intact is, yeah. and he's just... He's just stuck in the concrete. Yeah. With uh-huh. that. that there's, something laugh really, box. there's something really upsetting about that laugh box kind yeah, of going. Like, I wonder whether he set it off on the way down. Maybe he did, yeah. yeah. But he must have switched it on. I think he switched it on the way down. There you go. Or it had like a, maybe it's got an accelerometer in it. It's like an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> you drop your it. iPhone off the side of a building and it goes, <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about some stuff that didn't make it into this film, okay. if you don't mind. Look, can I can I just shout outs to Pat Hengel as Commissioner Gordon? Oh I think he's goodness. a good Gordon. I like Robert Wall, uh, Arliss. After taxes. What about, you're my number one. Oh, Jack Carlin's. Yeah, yeah, for sure. (laughs) A whole bunch of memorable side characters, including Bob the Goon. Yeah, who's who's a personal friend of... Uh, Jack Nicholson, actually. Oh, yeah. that makes a lot of sense. But he shows up in a bunch of different stuff as well yeah, from, right. from this era, yeah. What also, about, Porkins what is in this from oh, Star Wars. Right. What about the bit where uh, the Joker's like, Bob, gun. And he gives him the gun and he shoots Bob with it. <laughs> Terrific. Surely you would have seen that coming, Bob. No, maybe Bob. you wouldn't. Maybe you wouldn't. Because you're mates. Yeah, I guess and you mate. shouldn't shoot your mates. Shouldn't shoot your mates. It's true. <laughs> That's, That's right. a lesson we've learned from this. Okay, so apparently there was going to be a Robin sequence in this and it was actually scripted. Kiefer Sutherland was offered the role because oh. he was big and young at the time. There's a completed story storyboard that highlights the sequence of Robin's origin and the death of his parents and they actually went back and got the animated series cast to voice it. Oh, I see. Yeah, which is really interesting. So uh, we did recently did Rambo 3. And Stallone had some interesting things to say about 
this new era of movies kicked off with Batman 89, which it really did. Like Star Wars is credited as like the first kind of modern blockbuster, but yeah. Batman was a different era again. I mean, it kicked off a, just an incredible era of, of people adapting newspaper comic strips that nobody read anymore. The Shadow. Dick Tracy. The Phantom. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so many good ones. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Stallone said, the visuals took over. The special effects became more important than the single person. I wish I'd have thought of Velcro muscles myself. I didn't have to go to the gym all those years. All those I was wedded to the Iron Game, as we call it. But as, of course, we both know now, he's done a comic book movie. Judge Dredd. Bullet to the Head. But also Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Oh, that's right, so, yeah. yeah he's, I think he's kind of, he's come around on that since. But yeah, it was this different era of the muscle-bound action hero is kind of on the way out. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Probably True Lies was probably the proper real end of that. Yeah, maybe. and even that one was quite tongue-in-cheek. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, uh, as I said before, they should make another one of these. Yeah, like same um, continuity, yeah. Yeah, look, uh -huh. it doesn't, I know they're doing The Batman with Robin Pattinson. Sorry, Robat Batten-Bat, as we Thank call you. him. That's his nickname, his Batman <laughs> nickname. But I think now DC are doing these movies in set in different continuities and different universes. So mm. I think, why wouldn't you come back to this? Give us a Batman Beyond, but set in the Burton verse. Exactly. Why not? Anyways, this has been Batman 89. I'd love to know what people think of this movie. Does it hold up? It's definitely of its time for me, and I've rubbished it before in the past. I don't <laughs> love these Burton Batman uh -huh. movies, but there's so much in this that's still good. It's hard yeah. for me to just dismiss it completely. You just you can't really. Yeah. Well, exactly. And it's so much sort of, whether you like it or hate it, I think there's so much iconic stuff in that this that it's sort of carried on to the rest of the Batman adaptations. Exactly. So, and yeah, if the first time you saw it was like a grown-up, I would love to hear what you thought of it. Like, Absolutely. Does yeah. it hold up as a grown-up watching this movie for the first time? Yeah. Mm. Probably not, I'd imagine. Nah, probably not. Anyways, this has been Caravan of Garbage. We do this here every Tuesday. Please subscribe if uh, if you would like to because it helps us and you can come back and see what we're doing next week. Even if you wouldn't like to, That's please right. subscribe. Even if you're like, oh, I makes me physically this. sick. <laughs> <laughs> to hit subscribe. And of course, if you've got a suggestion for Caravan of Garbage, a movie, a video game, a TV show, a comic, we'll bloody take a look, leave it below. Also, we have a podcast called The Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out every Monday morning. And of course, we have an episode on the upcoming film Joker. Oh, yes. I'm very interested to see how that one's going to turn Me out. Me too. Yeah. Mm. Anyways, I'm at Mr. Sunday Movies on Twitter. I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter. See you guys next time. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. And Bob.